All right, Shalom. As always, I'm thankful and I'm grateful to be able to come out here once again to preach and to prophesy unto my people, being you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. According to the Holy Bible, you are the biblical Israelites. This is based off of your father's genetic line. It's about paternal and agnate relations in which determines whether or not you are of Jacob. This is not a so-called black or white thing. Mingling those two shades together, you get gray. And there are no gray areas when it comes to this truth. So I'm not teaching colorism. Okay? Not at all. I come out here to preach and to prophesy unto these other nations for that point. Because our people have been dispersed all throughout the earth. So we look like all nations under the sun. And we also have to let these other nations know their future and their judgment as well. All right? Yahweh Ba Shemiah Shai has given us these scriptures for our learning. So he has set us up to teach. So who do I come out here and stand up for? What is his name? Well, he's the power of Israel and he's not the power of any other nation. All right? Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai Ba Hashem Wabrakakwadash. Peace, blessings, and much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. On down to the rest of the elders who go well with Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, who they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well. You men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons, and daughters also. And the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. Let's touch on the book of Sirach, also known as the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2. I had a man recently call me who used to teach, who, who used to teach with me for a very short time. And what happened? He fell out. He went back into the world. And he was telling me how he misses coming out here. I told him, look, you can come out here and listen all you want to, but you can't join me again. No disrespect. All right. I was like, the fact that you broke your vow, there's a good chance the Lord's going to destroy you for that. But it's not up to me to decide that. But at the end of the day, you don't want to take the chance of partaking in this ministry just to go back into the world as a castaway we have to constantly endure all right and he didn't sound like he had too much peace in his mind either he's over here trying to uh double up on life insurance just in case he gets taken out the earth because he said that it's on his mind every day that the lord can judge him so let that be an example to all you men who feel like you can come into this and then go back into the world. So let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. And temptations come in various ways. Your own flesh can battle against you. Your own mind can battle against you. Well, regardless of what obstacles are set before us, our duty is to endure whatever the temptation may be and keep doing this work keep performing our vow because we made a vow to the Lord doing this. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. And that's what happens to certain men. When trouble comes, they'll make haste and they'll want to go back into the world. They don't want to serve the Lord anymore because they feel like it's too hard. They can't bear it. Well, you should have thought, it, uh, you should have thought about that before partaking into this ministry. Okay? And I warned him before he was to come out here to make sure you plan on doing this because this is a vow you're making. And if you break this vow, the Lord is going to destroy you. He'll break you. Okay? Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. But some men have the mentality that they're just out here wasting time. They act like they're just out here to blow steam. Or to just blow wind. This is just a hobby. Man, this is life or death. We're out here speaking righteousness. We're speaking prophecy. We're teaching our people. We're showing our people the way. Okay? 
But certain men, their mind isn't on that. Their mind is on, well, this day feels like last week. Last week feels like the week before, right? Every day feels the same. I'm still going, I'm still going through hell. I'm tired of working this nine to five. I'm tired of passing up opportunity, right? So a lot of men, instead of constantly enduring, they'll draw back their sword. And the sword is the words of the Heavenly Father. For the power is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which he showed towards his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. So we're supposed to be doing this until the end. We have to pay our vow. So the fact that this man has has fallen out the truth and he says he misses doing it he wished it never happened i told him the lord did it the lord severed us apart okay because it wasn't for you to endure now i wasn't being disrespectful i wasn't being belligerent i wasn't going super hard on the man but i was definitely telling them the truth okay that ye be not slothful but followers of them who faith and patience inherit the promise you're supposed to hold on to your patience not cast it away not go back into the world for when the power made promise to abraham because he could swear by no greater he swore by himself saying surely blessing i will bless thee and multiplying will i multiply thee and here's the point and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise so what do we have to do? We have to be like our forefather Abraham and patiently endure. We have to deal with non-believers in this world, non-believers amongst our brethren. We have to deal with the flesh. We have to deal with our thoughts. We have to deal with so much, but that's why we have to constantly endure. We have to count the cost. And as they say, you got to count the cost to be the boss. And there's going to be 144,000 of them, okay? Let's go to the book of Luke. Chapter 22. And verse 31. As you can see, I got my glasses back, man. I was digging through my things at home. Trying to find my tripod to do a lesson. And then the mess of me doing so, I looked down on the ground. And I found my glasses. So, Ka'ala, Yahweh, by Shabbat Shalom. Luke chapter 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. So Satan wants to overthrow the man of the He already has everyone else. There's a show called Lucifer. And then this for show, in the show in particular, there is a woman, and he has his eyes dead set on this woman. Because he pretty much can get every other woman, but this woman in particular, he can't obtain her. So he goes out of his way to basically sift her to himself. And that's how Satan's trying to get us. He already has the rest of the world under his vibration. He already has the whole world under his thought pattern. Okay? The whole world is in darkness, but not the elect. And that's why Satan's job is to try to sift us out, to try to overthrow us, so that we don't do this anymore, so that we tap out and wave the white flag. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. First Peter's chapter five and verse eight, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So you got spiritual demon Satan, okay, using his physical counterpart Esau as well, trying to sift us out, trying to devour us, trying to make us feel unworthy, like we're wasting our time. That's why Esau tries to play with our numbers. Is to try to discourage us. And then you have other people who claim to be believers and supporters. 
they're adding to your affliction because they're not supporting you. They're not showing that they believe. They're not showing that they want to be edified. They're not showing that what you're doing is giving them the uh, giving them the, the spirit of encouragement in the Lord, the spirit of bravery. People will straight up overlook you. And it's all in hopes to overthrow you. And these are different devices that Satan will use to have us draw back, to have us look back into the world. Okay? Because men that I've looked up to, that I've watched their videos, are the same men secretly, subliminally throwing shots at me. But they're not going to say that. Okay? And if they do, well, what took so long? Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter 9 and verse 4. So if Satan sifts you out, if you get devoured, and you have the spirit of going back into the world, this ain't for you anymore. Well, this is the book of Job, chapter 9 and verse 4. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered? So you can't come into this ministry and not pay your vow. You can't harden your heart against the Most High and His Son and prosper. In fact, that's a sure way of being overthrown. That's a sure way of not making it up out of here, man. That's a sure way of being destroyed. Okay? He is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered. So you can't, you know, go against the Lord, be this difficult person that's hard to bear. You look at sin like it's a sport. You look at sin like it's okay to do. You don't care about the words of the Heavenly Father or His Son. You look at the prophets that they set up as just win, like we're nothing special, okay? Well, you're not going to rebel and prosper. Right now, it might seem like you're making it. You can go back into the world. You can go, you know, chase a career. You can try to make something of yourself. But the Lord is going to destroy those who didn't pay their vow. Okay, if you made a vow, you got to pay that vow. And that goes for each and every one of us. Don't have the, men the mentality that you could be that special man that somehow, some way, doesn't have to pay their vow. Okay, let me find this scripture. Psalms chapter 116 and verse 14. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. And when you come out here, you're making a vow. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. And I'm paying my vow in the presence of all the Lord's people who may pass me. And it's 108 degrees out here. But I'm still out here making myself a living sacrifice because this is what the Lord wants me to do. And I'm not making myself anything. I'm doing everything totally in the spirit, totally naturally. Okay? Verse 18, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of his people. So our duty is paying our vows. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5. In verse 4, when thou vowest a vow unto the power, defer not to pay it. So don't tarry to pay your vow. Here it is, you've started coming out here. You've made a vow that you're going to keep on doing this. So don't tarry. Don't get to the point now you're procrastinating. You're setting it to the side. Next thing you know, you're not even paying the vow at all. The Lord is not going to hold you as innocent. In fact, the Lord is looking to kill men like you. Okay? Now, the fact that I spoke on the phone with this particular man, you know, I wish things would have worked out differently, but it's not up to me. But at the same time, you didn't turn your back on me. You turned your back on the Lord. And I mentioned that to you. So the only thing that you can really do is hope that the, more, the, the Lord show mercy upon you and you get your act together. Because you broke the vow. And all you men who broke the vow, it's not looking good for you. Don't be deceived. Don't think that because maybe you going back into the world, you've increased 
and more money, you got a better place in this world that the Lord isn't on you. When thou vowest a vow unto the power, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. So the Lord has no pleasure in fools, man. You make that vow, you got to pay it. All right? Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as the book of Sirach, chapter 27 and verse 11. The disclosure of a godly man is always with wisdom, but a fool changes as the moon. So the Lord isn't dealing with a fool that isn't paying his vow. You come into the truth, your mind is on this, then you change up. When you look at the moon, you have two sides, light and dark. One moment you're in the light, next thing you know you're in darkness. A fool changes as the moon, and that's why the Lord has made the, mo uh, the majority of these women to be foolish, and he's given them something known as the moon cycle, or the monthly cycle, or what you would call a period, that time of the month. Because these women are foolish. Well, a fool changes like the moon. One day you're in the light, next thing you know, you're back in darkness. You done fell out the truth. The Lord isn't dealing with fools. Once you make this vow to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you have to pay it. The discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom. So if you're a godly man, you're going to remain. You're going to keep on teaching this word. But if you're not a godly man, if you're a foolish man, you're going to change up like the moon. You're going to be a castaway. You're going to find yourself back in the world because you never really had faith in the first place. Let's go to the book of James. James chapter 1 and verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So if you come into this ministry, if you're a double-minded man, you're not going to endure. You're unstable. You're not set on a, on a support that's firm. Your foundation isn't Yahweh Shai, but your own belly, your own imagination. But those who believe in the Lord, those who believe in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, they're going to have a firm foundation. They're going to have faith. They're not going to be wavering and shaky, but they're going to fully be immersed in Yahweh while Yahweh Shai as much as possible. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Verse 10, but the rich and that he is made low because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his way. So if you decide you want to go back into the world and you want to chase riches, this isn't for you. You have better things to do. Just know that all that's going to fade away right along with you. Okay? We made a vow unto our Lord, and we have to pay that vow. And the only ones that are going to pay it are those who have faith. Let's go to Psalms chapter 22 and verse 9. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. So the elect have been given hope from birth. We've been given that belief. But you have certain men, they try to perpetrate and pretend like this is for them. Okay, and it's not for them at all, whatsoever. It's only for the elect of Israel and all those who've ever came into this and they've fallen out is because it's not for you, okay? Go back on with your life, man. But don't try to blame this ministry like it's the ministry's fault that you didn't endure. Don't try to blame this ministry like it's a cult you know, we're evil and that's why you couldn't endure. No, you couldn't endure because your spirit wasn't right. You couldn't endure because you wasn't called and chosen from the foundation of the earth. Okay? Because you definitely have to be called and chose already. Let's go to the book of James. Chapter 5 and verse 10. Take my brethren, the prophets 
who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of, of suffering, affliction, and of patience. So if you're a true man of the Lord, you're going to hold on. You're going to endure this suffering. You're going to show others who are believers as well that we're supposed to suffer patiently and that the Lord is with us. Okay? But not everybody has the mentality of wanting to suffer, which naturally you don't want to suffer. But really what I should say is having the mind to accept the suffering. James 5 and 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. So if you fall out, does that mean you endure? Absolutely not. How are you going to receive the crown if you fell out? How does that make sense? Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. So even when we catch our hell and when we go through various things, the Lord still shows to us that he's very kind. He still shows us that he's merciful. And when you look at Job, seeing that he endured patiently, the end was better than the beginning of Job. Okay? Job lost his children. Job's wife was bucking up against him. Job's friends were bucking up against him. He had boils on his body. You know, all these things were happening to Job. Things were happening back to back. But he held on to his integrity. He endured. But then you have certain men coming to this ministry and their mentality isn't to endure like Job, but rather to be a castaway like Judas. Okay? And don't be surprised if some of these men end up hanging themselves. All right? Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4 and 9. But now after that ye have known the power, or rather are known of the power, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? So why would you want to go back into the world after receiving this truth? But see, that's what happens. A lot of these men, they can't endure, so they'll, they'll end up falling out the truth. And then the next thing you know, they're right back in the world. And then in a lot of cases, they're actually worse off than what they were in the first time of them being pulled out the world. So don't be surprised if, you know, someone tries to get a hold of you who was once in this truth, but they're leaving out information. They're not telling you how jacked up their life really is or how they're seeing demons at night, right? Or how their life is falling to shambles. They'll try to, you know, act like everything is all good. Man, the Lord is going to totally destroy those who broke the vow, okay? You're not a friend of mine. Now, I can live peaceable around you but I can't be around you like that, okay? All you men who put your hand to the plow and you turn back, we are deemed enemies. We're not the same. And you same men, once that RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast, is determined by law that you have to take it or be put to death, you're going to take it. And you're going to sell out other men to get it taken as well. So there's no way in hell I could be around a castaway and look at that man as a brother. There's just no way. But now after that ye have known the power, or rather are known of the power. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? So we're supposed to endure, man. Okay? We're supposed to hold on to this knowledge, wisdom, and understand, not turn back. Let's go to the book of John. John chapter 5 and 14. 
Afterward, Yahweh Shai findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. So when you come into this ministry, you made a vow. That's, that's a sign of the Lord showing you mercy. But when you cast this away and then you go back into the world, well, guess what? Now a worse thing is going to come upon you. The Lord is going to bring plagues upon you. Man. And if things are going well for you at the moment, just know that the plagues are coming. And you men who fell out, you know deep in your mind that you're not comforted. You're not sleeping that well at night. Okay? And I told him that once men fall out the truth, there's a particular spirit that's taken off of them to where they can't even get locked in no more. So even if he wanted to come back into the truth, he gonna have a very, very difficult time. It's like trying to start a lawnmower and the gasoline is low. And it's trying to start, but it just keeps shutting off, man. Well, that's how a lot of these men are who end up, you know, falling out and trying to come back in. Okay, if you fell out, you broke the vow, okay? You can't disappear for two years and come back like you never left. Okay, this is not the hip hop industry. John chapter 5 and 14. Afterward, Yahweh shall find him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse man come unto thee. So you come into this truth, you better hold on to that vow, or a worse thing is going to come unto you. But if you don't endure, the Lord is going to destroy you. And you may be destroyed in thermonuclear fire. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So how do you overcome? You're supposed to remain in this ministry. You're supposed to remain a believer. You're supposed to remain under the umbrella of Yahweh while Yahweh Shai. Not turn back and go, and go into the world go back to them weak and beggarly elements, things that are going to be dissolved away and destroyed, you're supposed to hold on and keep your integrity. But I understand a lot of you men, that's just not going to happen because it's not for you. Only the elect are going to hold on. You have to be a special person. And I truly hope to be of that number. I truly hope to be of the 144,000. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So you have to overcome in order for you to be delivered from that thermonuclear fire that the world is going to have to suffer. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12. In verse 22, therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, thou scourges our enemies a thousand times more to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodliness. And when we ourselves are judged, we should look for mercy. So we're holding on. We're enduring because we're looking for mercy. We're not trying to be judged with the rest of the world. Those who are in darkness. And that includes those who were once in this truth, but they went back into the world. You were once the bright side of the moon. Now you're on the dark side of the moon. Okay? And that's... <laughs> it, people are going to be destroyed, man. <laughs> Scoffers, man. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12 to 22. Therefore, whereas thou dost... <laughs> wherefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, Thou scourges our enemies a thousand times more to the intent when we judge we should carefully think of thy goodness and when we ourselves are judged we should look for mercy so our enemies are going to be scourged a lot worse than we are okay so we should be looking forward to enduring so that we could be saved man because i'm hoping that i remain and i'm sure you brothers who are sincere you're looking forward to remaining as well so that you could be found worthy in the presence of the Lord the presence of the Lamb Let's see if I can find this scripture give me 
give me a moment because now I gotta search. Okay, this is Matthew's chapter 15. In verse 13, but he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. And it's plain and simple. If the heavenly father didn't plant you, you're going to be rooted. You're going to be uprooted. And if you take the root out, it's completely done. It's done for. It's not growing anymore. If the heavenly father doesn't uh, plant you, you're going to be uprooted. You're going to be casted away. But he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. So you're going to be plucked out, plucked out this ministry, plucked out the truth. You're, you're not going to be out here teaching. Now, you might have been out here teaching before, but you're not going to remain. OK, why? Let's go to the book of Jude. This is the book of Jude, chapter one. In verse four. For there are certain men crept in unawares, and those are the same men who the Heavenly Father did not plant, but rather they crept in unawares. All right? They came in some other way, which would make them what? A thief and a robber. Ain't no thief or robber entering in to the gates of heaven. You got to come up the right way. You got to come up through the direction the Lamb has shown us. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord power and our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So if you're not planted by the Heavenly Father, that means you were planted to be plucked out that means you're basically condemned from the very beginning you were made to be taken and destroyed you were made to be a natural brute beast taken and destroyed okay and we're blip we're um we're helping to build the third temple right now you might say well, we're building the third temple spiritually and you want to make sure that if you're going to be a partaker in building this third temple and you have the right supplies, you have the time, you have the money, okay? You have the ability, you have the mental fortitude. Let's go to Luke chapter 14. In verse 28. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? So when you come into this ministry, you better count the cost. Don't just come in, don't just um, join this thinking, oh, it's a brotherhood, I can gain friends, right? I can get free money if I'm down. No, you gotta count the cost. You gotta be in this to win this, okay? And guess what? Us men who are of um, the Lord's elect, we're in the scriptures. We're in this to win this, all right? Less happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it all, that behold him, Excuse me. All that begin. Let me read it again. Luke 14 and 29. Less happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begun to mock him. So if you come into this truth and you're out here condemning these people, next thing you know, you're not even doing it no more. People are going to look at you like, man, weren't you just talking all this and all that and you're not even in that no more? Oh, man, uh, see what happened was that was a cult. You know, I was deceived. Man, the Lord going to kill you. That's what that means. Okay? Saying this man begun to build and was not able to finish. And we're building the third temple. So you can't be a partaker and you don't have the ability within you to finish. Which ultimately that means what? You were created to be condemned. You were created to be plucked up and uprooted. Because the Heavenly Father is not going to plant you just to uproot you. For what king is going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. And guess what? We're that 10,000 against the 20,000. 
This is a small sanctuary that we're building. But yet, because most people aren't listening, most people will talk their madness and will feel how they feel. A lot of you men will say, I can't do this no more. Well, guess what? The Lord is going to kill you and your family because you're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The Lord is going to forget you. He's going to forget your wife. He's going to forget your children. Let's go to Hosea. Chapter four. In verse five. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shall be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power, I will also forget thy children. So if you go back into the world, that means you forgot about your power. And what does that mean? That means ultimately the heavenly father is going to forget you. He's going to forget your family. You know, all those you love, man. Okay, you're supposed to be in this to win this. Let's go to Zephaniah. Chapter one and verse two. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, said the Lord Power. Verse 6, and them, and them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord Yahweh, nor inquired for him. So all those who turn back, you're going to be put to death. That's just the truth. And as much as some of you may want to come back, you know, you reflect on the good old days. You reflect on how, how well you were being treated. You reflect on uh, how friendly or how brotherly a particular man or men were, and you can't find that in the world, it's too late. Now you're closed out because you broke that vow, okay? You can't come back now, man. Yahweh Shai is not going to that cross two times. His name ain't uh, Yahweh Shai two times. He went to that cross one time, first for himself, and then for the rest of the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. But the rest of the nation, they have to get it on the other side. Okay? First Samuels. Chapter 16. And verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Saul rose up and went to Ramah. So what you're gonna see is a changing of power from one man to another man. And what's crazy is when you read about Saul, when he first became king over Israel, he was a very humble man. And he was mentioning how he came from very a, a very a uh, small family basically like his family wasn't special so what would make him so fit to be a king and a ruler over israel over time he started to wax worse and worse which is scary because a brother might have a sincere mind at first and over time he just gets worse okay that's scary as hell which goes to show ultimately you're either planted by the heavenly father or you're not But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So the Lord took his spirit off of Saul. And that's the same thing you're seeing amongst men who come into this ministry and then they end up falling out. They're not in this no more. The Lord ends up taking the spirit off of them. And Saul's servant said unto him, behold, now an evil spirit from the power troubled thee. And these men end up getting troubled once they fall out the truth. They reflect on what they would have, could have, and should have had. And then they think about all the times they were saying, what's going to happen to this person and that person if they're wicked, if they don't repent. And then they find themselves living that same life, going right back to their wickedness. It's in the back of their mind. But they have an evil spirit on them. It overtakes them. Okay, and they're not able to fully uh, come back into this thing because now the Lord has them trapped to be destroyed. So a lot of these men, they're in the spirit of the house of Saul. But the house of David, that's not so. 2 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. Now there was a long war between the house of Saul 
in the house of David. So you're seeing that happening right now, even in Israel. You're seeing men have their differences, having their divide. You have certain men going over here, other men going over here. Everybody's kind of going under their umbrella, so to speak. You got the umbrella of Saul and you have the umbrella of David. Okay, you have the house of David, the house of Saul. The house of David is going to grow stronger. The house of Saul is going to grow weaker. And that's why these niggas always end up falling out the truth. And I don't wish that upon any brother, man. I'm not that guy to wish bad on brethren. I've always been that guy to just always receive the hatred. And I kind of respond to it. But I've never been that guy to just dish it out for no reason. But some of these men, which are a lot of them really, they have hatred in their heart for no reason. Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. So why is there a long war? Because the Heavenly Father, according to the book of Exodus, chapter 15, and verse 3, it tells you how he's a man of war. But David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. So you're going to wax weaker and weaker if you're not of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You're not going to pay your vow. Let's go to Numbers chapter 30. In verse 1, And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. So you're supposed to finish that vow, man. You're supposed to uh, have the mentality of enduring until the very end. This isn't some seasonal event. Well, if I'm not out of here in three years, I'm throwing in the towel. If I'm not out of here in the next five years, I'm done. No, you got to have it in your mind to hope that we get out of here soon, but have the mentality, however long it takes, is how long you plan on fighting. Okay, that's the mentality you have to have. Okay? Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 and verse 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Those are those who haven't been planted by the Heavenly Father. Because a good husbandman is not going to plant on gravel. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. And a lot of our people, they have that mentality at first. They hear of all the good things about being an Israelite. But they haven't gone through the hell yet. And have no root in themselves because the Lord didn't root them. And so endurable for a short time because they've been predestined. They've been pre, um, predetermined to be destroyed. And so endure but for a time afterward when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So many men end up getting offended and they go back into the world, which means what? Satan did his job. Just like how it was told to Simon Peter that Satan desires to sift you. Well, if you end up falling out the truth and going back into the world, that means Satan won. But for those who are of the elect, we're going to hold on because we're going to be persuaded. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. In verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So you have to be fully persuaded in your own mind so that you can have the mentality of enduring until the end, regardless of who laughs at you or who um, has ill things to say about you. Because guess what? Just as we go through the afflictions, the Lord sends us blessings too. Just like this fine-ass woman, she just acknowledged me, right? So just as the Lord will have people come against us, the Lord also has people that uh, he'll send to comfort us. Even if they're not of the church and they're not going to make it, 
he still puts a comforting spirit on others as well. So we're not only entreated with evil. We're not only entreated with those who want to kill us and all that, but we do have a lot of enemies nevertheless. Okay? But one thing about Yahweh Shai, when you speak about him, there's always going to be a divide. There's always going to be um, controversy sparked up. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So we have to be persuaded or another way of saying convinced. If you're not convinced, I can't help you. But in order for you to be convinced, you have to be gifted something known as faith. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the power. So if you have faith, you're going to endure. You're going to hold on. You're going to be encouraging. You're going to be encouraged as well. You're not going to be in that loser spirit. You're going to be in the spirit of wanting to um, embrace the win. Embrace this journey. So that we have a story to talk about in the kingdom. Embrace this journey so that once we're united again with our Lord and Savior, we have a lot to talk about and laugh about. Hell, maybe even cry about. But we know that with holding on, that's where the reward comes. What's the point of going this far? And we're also to the finish line. And then right at the finish line, you say, okay, I'm tired. I can't do this no more. That's crazy. You might as well finish the race. You're at the end. So I say to you brothers who are feeling weak in your spirit, finish it. We're at the end. We're not going to be here a whole lot longer. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So our salvation is close. Our salvation is nearer then our salvation is closer than what we even know. And guess what? The Lord is showing us various amounts of different signs, okay? Constantly showing that he's with us and that he's working. But the problem is these non-believers, those who are carnal, not only do they want to receive signs, even when they do receive the signs, they still reject them. They still cast them off, okay? They still portray them as not being a big deal. They still can't perceive what's happening. This is the book of Matthews chapter 12. In verse 39. And he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. So the men that you see out here doing this, teaching in truth and in sincerity, we are a sign given unto you. And those who are set up by the Lord, they're going to keep on doing this until the Lord removes them. We're not going to remove ourselves because of our frustration. Look, I don't get a lot of views. A lot of men think I'm weird. A lot of men think I'm crazy for things that I say. And I'm still out here doing this because the Lord is with me. And I'm by myself. And I'm still able to come out here and do this. Why? Because the Lord is with me. I'm not backed by no camp. Now, I give um, reverence to my teachers of GMS because that's who, who taught a lot, of the, a lot of the things that I know. But it's not because of them that I'm in the truth. It's because of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot. And this isn't about being a part of a camp. This is about the believers of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot in spirit and in truth. The doctrine matters. Okay? We're connected through the doctrine, not through the acronym of a camp. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And here it is. As much as these people want a sign, signs are being given to them left and right, up and down, front and center. And they can't even comprehend it. And there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas, because the prophets are a sign unto you people. And all you men who fell out, you're a sign that the Lord is not with you. Ezekiel 24 and 24. Thus Ezekiel, just like Jonas, is unto you a sign. And what were they? They were prophets. According to all that he had done, shall ye do. So just like they prophesied, 
we're doing the same thing because we're back in our lot as well if we're of those men. And then we're going to keep hitting you with this word and not fall off because if the Lord planted us, we're not going nowhere. Not until it's time for us to go anywhere. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign. According to all that he had done, shall ye do. And when this cometh, ye shall know that I am the Lord power. So a sign is being sent forth amongst our people and they can't comprehend it because they're in darkness. And a lot of men who have come into this truth, they can't comprehend it because their heart was never really established in righteousness from the beginning. They couldn't see the signs. They couldn't comprehend. Let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 26, also known as the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26 and verse 28. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry. A man of war that suffereth party, poverty, a man of war that suffereth poverty, and men of understanding that are not set by, and one that returneth from righteousness to sin. For the Lord prepareth such a one for the sword. So if you came into this truth, but then you drew back, the Lord don't like you. The Lord is going to destroy you. That's just the truth, man. And I know a lot of you, you're angry at that, but you should have kept going. You should have kept fighting. And with everything happening, what can you say? What's your excuse now? There is no excuse. You just got to accept punishment. Okay, because more than likely, more than likely the Lord ain't um, saving you fallout boys. It's just not happening like that. Okay? Let's touch on the book of Psalms chapter 51. In verse 9. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. And that's what we're hoping for. So that we can be delivered. Seeing that we're all guilty. We're all sinners who are under the law. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O power, and renew a spirit, renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Because the Lord is doing that to a lot of men. A lot of men are having the Holy Spirit taken from them. Because the Lord can not only give you something, but the Lord could also take away something. Okay? And it's a beautiful thing, brothers, that we're out here doing this. Because we're not doing this on our own. Whether you go out here once a week. You come out here two, three, four times a week or almost every day or every day. The Lord has a spirit on us to do so. And we should be thankful that we're able to be partakers and hope that the Lord keeps on working through us, man, and with us and not against us, but rather for us. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. And that's a prayer that David made because David went off and he knew seeing what Saul had witnessed when he had the spirit taken off him he knew the same thing could happen unto him as well so he humbled down quickly but the Lord showed a favor upon David because he's of the elect I'm going to close it I'm going to bring out two more so this is Luke chapter 8 in verse 18, take heed therefore how ye hear, for whosoever hath to him shall be given. So if this truth is for you, that means you were called and chosen from the beginning. This was given to you to obtain it and to endure holding on to it. And whosoever hath not from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. And that's what happened with King Saul. It seemed like he had the Holy Spirit. It seemed like he was a man of the Lord. But he constantly was showing signs of a wicked man. Okay? Even to a point of making an oath that um, those who would eat honey would basically be put to death due to an oath. And his son Jonathan ended up tasting of the honey. 
And because of him being so rash in his oath, he was willing to kill his own son when his son wasn't even around to make the oath. That's not a righteous man. That's not a righteous thing to do. But Saul constantly would do things that would show he's not right. And eventually what happened? The Holy Spirit got took it off of him, which at one time he actually had it on him. But it got took right off of him, man. That's scary as hell. Take heed therefore how ye hear, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. So it might seem like you're of this truth, but, but if you're not of the elect, it's going to be taken from you. Okay, and that's just the truth of the matter. So I'm going to close it here. Hebrews chapter 12. In verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. So don't fall off the truth because you're going through a rough time or you're being rebuked or you're being corrected or you might have been wrong on something you thought you were right on. Okay? Just take the humility. We all have to go through it. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So if you want the love of the Father, you have to take the good, the bad, and the ugly. If ye endure chastening, the power dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? So if you claim to be a son of the Heavenly Father, when you go through your chastenings, you would have to endure them. You would have to hold on and bear those burdens. Because that shows whether or not you are of the Father or you are of this world. Okay, most people, they'll spaz out. They'll, they'll catch a temper tantrum and say, oh, I can't do this no more. They can't control their spirit. Okay? The scriptures tell us that we can be angry. Let's get that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. I'm going to read two more. Chapter 7, verse 7. Verse 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. And anger can cause you to want to go back into the world, to be a fallout boy. You being angry, now you're blaming the Lord. Now you're blaming this ministry. Okay? Because you're not trying to endure chastening as a son. Okay? But rather, you're taking it wrong. Okay? Let's close it here. Ephesians chapter 4 and 26. Be ye angry and sin not. So there's nothing wrong with being bothered, being angry. You're supposed to be angry. It tells you in Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, actually. I could have read it, but I didn't. But uh, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. Mad and a gift destroys the heart. So being mad isn't the problem. But if being angry causes you to say, man, I'm throwing in a towel to hell with this. I got better things to do. This ain't what I was thinking when I was trying to come into this. Then you're not in the right spirit. Be ye angry and sin not. Because if that anger causes you to sin, that's where the problem comes in. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Next thing you know, you're waking up the next day. You don't even want to be in this no more. You're blaming the Heavenly Father. You go to sleep that way. You wake up. The spirit's not even on you, man. Okay? And then the next thing you know, it's two weeks, three weeks, three weeks to a month. Now you're gone. You're a castaway. So I pray that this lesson it was simple and edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiah was shy. So with that, I'm going to give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel and not the power of any other nation. And what is his name? Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Yahweh Lord willing, that was simple and edifying. Until next time, Shalom.